I would say they should at least give you a call and talk to you. Maybe you're not ready to sell today or tomorrow, but you can assist them in selling maybe in a year from now, maybe right. in two years from now. Right. You can uh, tell them what they might need to do and show to make their business more valuable. Like when you came to one of our meetings and you were telling uh, everybody else at the meeting what you need to do to increase the value of your business. So maybe they're not ready yet, but you might find you're ready. Right. So, and if you're ready, you're the guy to do it. I would say as a business owner, if you're thinking about selling your business, maybe call some other people that abused you as a broker. Right. Just get, honestly talk to somebody on the phone. Just don't fly well, by you know what, what you see. You know, it really does help. I know you're not asking this question, but I'm going to add it in. Yes, yeah, yeah. I think it's important. We had about a year ago, we had a, a guy who owned the surf pro in California, and he had a friend in Orlando who was interested in one. And we met with them, and we threw a, a price at them, and it was a lot less than what we came up with that we should ask for. So if we had sold them, we would have really undervalued our business. Right, right, right. So yeah. I, I'm glad we waited until we, we had someone who really knew what the restoration businesses are worth. Right. And that helped with the value. And, you know, we, we might have taken a lot less a year ago because we didn't know. Right. Sometimes people think, well, I won't pay that commission. Yeah, you won't, but maybe you're not going to get the true value of your business. Right. So research right. it. Make the call. What I liked is that you got out ahead in front of potential problems or concerns. You didn't let them come to you and happen and then deal with them. You got out in front of it, like we had with the mold license. We had a little discrepancy there, and I had informed you about it when we were really close to the closing. And like I, you got out ahead, and you spoke to the lawyers involved, the clients, and everything, and you worked it out so it didn't become an issue. And the, being proactive is what I liked about you, not... Not waiting for a problem to happen. If you saw one with your experience, let's go after that. Now, being it's at night, weekend, whatever, you took care of it. Well, the other thing I felt comfortable with, too, is the people you presented us, you felt were qualified. You right. just didn't yeah. come and say, hey, yeah. would you talk to this person or that person just because they called up about a business. I feel like everybody you had sent our way to talk to about Serious. our business... We're serious yeah. individuals, right. yeah. so you didn't waste you our time. You weeded through a lot we of people. Were busy yeah. uh, conducting business. Still, yeah. I had a lot of fears about it because I had experienced something in the past with a business broker that didn't. It wasn't successful at all, and so um, when you're going to hand something over to somebody that you've worked hard for 20 years, and basically you are handed it over to them because you're saying, okay, you can sell this. And you have to put a lot of trust in that person that they're going to present you with the right people. They're also going to present your business in the correct light. And that was important to me. I didn't feel I had that opportunity in past the way he um, advertised it. I was extremely unhappy with. Well, I thought like it's commitment in time. It's a year's commitment. And I didn't want to sign with a broker, and if it was a bad broker, then we're kind of committed to each other for a year. It's like a, a marriage for right. a year. So I wanted to make sure who we picked was going to be able to sell it. And, well, we did. Well, what yeah. I know now yeah. is that it was a lot easier road than I okay. thought. Yeah. That I have much more appreciation for brokers. <laughs> right. I truly yeah. do. Yeah. I, you know, I was always leery of it, but I, I think that I've come to the realization everybody has a job and a purpose, and it was well worth that. When right. I see the amount of effort that you put into it and the time, and I can see that no matter when it was, like he said, I could call you day, night, weekend, you always picked up and you always responded. Right. So that's more or less like the 24 right. 7 business that we're all in. So, it does make it a lot easier. The whole transition, like I said, I think you helped the transition of the buyer coming in too. Right. It made it easier for the buyer to feel comfortable that he could uh, call you or you right. were emailing and keeping him updated on right. things too. Right. So you're not just helping the seller, you're helping the buyer it's, to transition it's a, to it. It's a process. Right. Yeah. And sometimes it might be a quicker process, but you've got to be prepared that it's going to be a process. Right. Go about, run your business like you told me, go about, forget your selling it till I contact you, and I'll let you know what you need to know about selling it. And that was, we could focus on still operating our business, making yeah. as much money right. as we can. We right. want to keep the business up there, which we did. It was, our last year was like our best year. Yeah. And we let you focus on the selling. 
and it worked out. If he was sending us a potential uh, a buyer, he didn't give us much information about it. <clears throat> Just a name, and they wanted to buy the business. So we were going in it blind. But when you presented someone to us, we had the information, what their background history was, their financial, are they capable of uh, affording the business. We had some background information to work with. We weren't going into a meeting blind or showing somebody blind. We knew what they were about. We had a good picture. Right. Yeah, he um, because he did where somebody would just call on a business and he would just send them over to me. Yeah. I mean, and you know, sometimes these individuals didn't have brokers and I didn't know what to present or say to these people because you can seriously, you can make the mistake and say the wrong things and chase a person away who right. might have been the person you needed. Right. Yeah. So it does help to have somebody yeah, there that knows what they're doing. Kind of it coach is. on what you might want to say and what... They might want to stay away from. Right. Exactly. We're still being honest, but you know, say the right thing. Put your business in the best possible light, and that's what you helped us to do. The process uh, was kind of twofold for us because I mostly started talking to you about the value, right. how you uh, assess the value. We just didn't tell you what we made for the last three years, and you said, and what equipment? Okay, here's here's what you should ask. You went about it methodically. You have a, a certain way you go about evaluating restoration businesses. So yeah. me and you worked on that. We came to a consensus on what we want to do. We put it for sale. You told us the marketing plan. We pretty much went with it. Then when it got into the number crunching and everything, I had to turn you on my wife, Gail, because she's yeah. the one who does the, the QuickBooks and the bookkeeping. Right. Then you had to work with her to, for her to give you the, the supporting documents, which is important. Right. So you made sure that you had all those documents or most of them so when a client was really serious we could just give them whatever they wanted we right. gave them the paper tray it was there ready to go you didn't right. say oh where's that that we had it right if you feel the time is right you got to just feel it if you're a business owner entrepreneur you're used to taking chances so this is an educated chance if you want to change your life you got to do it if you're not ready Take some more time, but at least get some information to to uh, chew on for a while, and then when when the time is right, you'll know, you'll feel it. You know whether you say the phrase "I'm burnt out," or you, you just know when you're hot. It's time. It's time to get out. Right. And when it's time to get out. It's well, I don't call. ever think people should necessarily throw the word "burnt out" out right. there. Yeah. I think that what it should be more is that you're not enjoying the life you have right now. Right. It was exciting at one time. And like it was for us, it was um, a 20-year effort that we put into this. Yeah. But we have reached the point in our lives to where we would like to do something else yeah. a little bit different. It doesn't mean you're just going to drop everything and not do anything anymore. It's right. that you have the spirit to go on to something else. Right. And so, you know, if you do have that passion and you can see that it is an easier process than what you think, and you go out on the other side, there's so much more out there to still do. Right. You know, no matter what age you are, there's still plenty of things out there to do. Right. You just have to have the confidence in yourself that you know that, okay, today's the day right. that I'm going to live the life I love. Right.